Hey, I'm really glad you're here. Welcome to this week's uh, episode of Content Creation Made Easy podcast. I am talking today to Matilda Buffum, and she's going to tell you all about who she is, but I'm really glad that she's here because she's a client of mine inside the Content Creator Studio. And every month I do one of these coaching calls live with one of my studio members to work through a problem that's been driving them a little bonkers. So Matilda is here today. I'm going to have her tell you what she does, and you're going to listen as we work through something that will make content creation feel more smooth, simple, and easy for her. Hi, Matilda. Hello. Thanks for having me. I'm glad you're here. So everybody, what you need to know is we've already worked through a barking dog, a snowstorm on my end, people walking up my walk, asking to shovel our walk, both of our dogs going crazy. So we're here. We're ready to get down to work. So let's go. So Matilda, I want to know, first of all, who you are, what your business is, and who you help. Yeah. So my business is Movement with Matilda. And it is movement for your body, but also movement for your life towards your goals and your dreams. So I really love movement. Yoga is what I provide. That's classes and retreats. And I also love helping people with their goals, like getting somewhere there. So I do group coaching or accountability and then one-on-one -on -one coaching. Nice. So tell us, you've got your business set up. I know you recently got your life coaching certification. What is driving you bonkers with your content? What's driving me a little bonkers is that I am very consistent on Instagram mm -hmm. and I've grown a lot in my ability to create content and get it out there, but I'm not finding that I'm getting a lot of conversion into people taking action, even just like joining my email list or, or doing something simple that could maybe turn them into a potential client. Okay. So what I'm hearing is that you're basically struggling with the thing that a lot of content creators are struggling with. Why the hell am I doing this if I'm not getting any conversions? Because that's the point, right? Like we want to show yeah. up and educate and help, but also we need to make some money. And that happens when people convert to clients or customers. Mm -hmm. Okay. So currently you're showing up on Instagram fairly regularly, right? Yes. And then are you using any other platforms to share your content and engage with people? Sometimes I use Facebook. Um, and then I do have an email list, but I don't show up consistently there. Okay. Um, so we have to just talk about a couple of things before we dive in. You know that face, uh, Facebook and Instagram are only showing our stuff organically to about one to 2% of your followers, right? Yeah. And even if you're doing reels, which uh, Instagram is pushing and you can get a lot more views, those people don't necessarily convert to followers or um, customers because they're seeing you in a more random way, right? Yeah. Okay. So that all makes sense. Uh, so one of the first things I want to ask you is, would you be willing to have one of the calls to action for your people be to join your email list? So, and we have to figure out like why they should join, but would you be willing to show up more frequently on email to nurture people in a place where they've already raised their hand and said, I want to hear from you? Yeah, definitely. And I like that. Um, I mean, I think you've said these things to me before, but I'm really hearing it right now that Instagram is like top of funnel, just getting my face out there. People are noticing me, but then if they've already said, yes, I, I think you're cool. Like I want to know more about what you do. Yeah. That makes sense to foster the email list. So I'm, I'm up for that. Yeah. So the email list is a great place to develop a relationship. And that's an important, um, I think that's an important difference that we need to remember is, uh, you know, uh, say Instagram could be like a party or a nightclub vibe, right? Like it's just where we're all kind of like doing this superficial surfacey meeting. But if you really wanted to get to know somebody more interesting, you might go have lunch with them or go to coffee with them or take a walk with them and nurture, begin to nurture the relationship. That's what an, that's what an email list does for you when you're doing it right. Not just like selling to people, but really nurturing them along the way. So I guess that's the first thing I want to ask you is under, are you willing to understand the difference between the use of in social media and the use of email and be willing to show up a little bit consist more consistently on your email list so that you can develop the relationship. Because one of the things I know is it really does take quite a long time for people to convert. It's shorter sometimes, it's longer other times, but it's it doesn't really happen within a few days usually. Yeah. Does that I feel like? Willing. Okay. Yeah, I'm definitely willing. Then let's talk about who these people are. So who is your audience? What, I mean, we, we've heard what you do. We've heard about your certification. We've heard about what you love with yoga and movement, but like, who are the people that you want to speak to both on Instagram and in your email list? Yeah. 
I want to work with women in their 20s. Because mm -hmm. let's be honest, 20s can suck. Um, yes, so I yes. want to support women in their 20s that are maybe dealing with anxiety, depression, or just a lot of stress from society, their parents, school, uh, that really feel like they can see a future for themselves. Maybe it's an emotional future, maybe it's a career they can see, but they're feeling stuck on how to get there. Okay. So, okay, based on what you just told me, the women in your tw their 20s, of the people who are already following you on Instagram and already on your email list, is that the audience you currently have? Um, I'd say half or less. Yeah. Cause I have, okay. you know, family and friends of my mom and uh, different people who have come in that are not that. that. Okay. But at least half, I think. Okay. So we have to really then focus on getting your new audience members to be in that realm of a woman in her twenties, who's, who really wants support in overcoming all the hurdles of being in your twenties so that you can kind of move faster along your path. Right. Yeah. Yep. 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 Okay. In your messaging right now, are you talking to that woman? Are you specifically using the language that she would use talking about the results that she wants speaking to her issues? I, so I just got really clear, like in the last month and a half that that's who I want. So I'm starting to. Okay. So give us an example of what that looks like, maybe in like a reel or an Instagram post. Yeah. Um, okay. I just was thinking about this yesterday. Give me a moment. Like I'm going to do a reel, um, where I'm just saying, you know, to women in their twenties, don't, um, like, don't worry too much. Life gets better. Take it from somebody who's been there. And then in mm -hmm. the caption, I can talk more deeply about my story. Okay. So you're really calling out who that person is in that reel. Um, have you really done the work to identify how they speak about their problems? Like the words that they're using? Yeah, I've had one, um, like ideal client interview to, to see how she spoke. And I noticed a couple different words than what I use. Mm. There was one specific that I was like, Ooh, that's a good one. But now I'm having trouble remembering it. <laughs> Okay. So you've done only one interview with a person in their twenties so far. Yeah. Okay. So you know that that's a priority, right? Like talking yes. to at least five to 10 of these women so that you can find out what words they're using. So that's, that would be the first big thing I would really focus on is making sure that those interviews get done and taking verbatim notes on what they say so that yes. you can use those words back to them. So the second thing after doing the target market interviews or the ideal client interviews, whatever you want to call them, um, in your messaging, you say that you are movement with Matilda and you really focus on yoga and movement and you do have coaching and you have retreats. But if I went to your, say your Instagram bio, would I know that you're specifically working with women in their twenties as a life coach and that you want to do more of that? Or would I see a lot of yoga stuff and movement stuff? Yeah. You would more see yoga and movement right now. Okay. So that is definitely something that needs to be cleaned up and addressed right yeah. away. Because when I, when you see movement with Matilda or the other thing that you talk about a lot is mindfulness, right? Yes. So movement and mindfulness I don't, and I know I'm not your ideal client, obviously I'm 52 years, almost 52 years old. But um, when I see movement and mindfulness, my mind does not automatically go to life coaching for women in their twenties. Yeah. So what do you think needs to shift there for you? Um, well, definitely just cleaning it up, like you said, but I mean, I'm even open to changing the wording on some things okay. so that it's more clear that I, because what I'm finding is I'm actually more passionate and spending more time on the coaching and the accountability and talking and then using movement as a tool within that. So I think you just identified a big kind of flashing red light, like movement and mindfulness are the 
almost like the red carpet into working with you right now. And when your people meet you, they might think like, oh, I don't want yoga. I don't want mindfulness. That's not what I need. I need X, Y, and Z. We don't know what that is yet because you haven't done those interviews fully. You don't have those words yet, but it might be that people have identified you with movement and yoga so much that it's your job now is really to educate them about the shift you're making in your focus. Yes. Okay. I got that. Okay. So if we were really going to move from movement with Matilda, and it might be that you have to change the name that you need to change the bio, all of that stuff can happen. I wouldn't do any of that until I did all of my interviews and figured out like, what is it that these women are struggling with? What words are they using different from what I'm using? Um, Do they want accountability? Is that the word they're looking for? Do they want coaching or guidance or mentorship? Like what is the words that they're using? We don't know that yet. Yeah. But one of my favorite things about you is that you're very open to being like, I'm going to make this work. I'm not married and anchored to this movement with Matilda thing, but I'm really open to what it needs to be. So my audience can hear me. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It's such a great quality of yours. So given that we, we know that we probably have to shift away from the entry point being movement and uh, yoga, tell me some of the things you can start weaving in right away. Even if you haven't done your, all of your interviews at, what are some of the things you can start weaving in right away to talk about in your content on Instagram that would help people know like, Hey, I'm more than just uh, a yoga girl. (laughs) um well since I've already started doing some coaching I could get some testimonials I could share about results that my clients are getting um yeah I could oh I don't know those are the first two things that come up those are great and I want to can I give you nervous right now I'm like I know it's hard to think (laughs) on your feet okay can I help you can I help give you some ideas for topics yes I'd love that (laughs) okay so being in your 20s is all about figuring out who you want to be when you grow up right like and it's such a tumultuous time it's such a shitty time I mean it's awesome because you're young but you also don't know what you're doing mostly and you wish that somebody would just tell you what to do but you also don't want anybody to tell you what to do right um (laughs) And you're like, I'm a grown up, and then you're like, but I'm totally faking it at the same time, right? That is so true. The feeling like you're faking it all the time. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so just these things alone are topics. Given what you already know, even though you haven't done your interviews, like you, you've been in your twenties. You're almost yeah. done with them, right? <laughs> um, so talking about some of these problems in a really frank vulnerable way could be a way to start doing this, right? The other thing topic wise is your twenties are all, Hey ladies, your twenties are all about figuring shit out. And I have been figuring shit out in my business. Your twenties are all about trying this and trying that and pivoting and swiveling and swirling and figuring it out. And I have actually just done that in my business, right? Mm -hmm. I used to just be a yoga teacher, but now I'm a life coach. I used to just teach yoga in person, but now I lead retreats, like Mm -hmm. really starting to use your experience as a jumping off point for exactly what they're struggling with too. Yeah. Yeah. And the beautiful thing about that is it lets your audience know like, oh, she gets me. Like she resonates with me and she's speaking my language and like, oh, maybe she could help me. Right. It establishes you as somebody who's been there, but also has an expertise that can help them. Yes. How does that feel? That feels really good. Yeah. I like, it sounds fun to make those posts be like, look, I, I know where you've been. You feel like you're faking it. You feel like this. And then also saying, here's where I've been and here's where I am. And I would love to help you with that. Yeah. So I'm um, talking about the, I think the, the theme here is really weaving in. I am now a life coach. What I was doing wasn't enough for me. What you might be doing might not be enough for you. I had guidance. You might need guidance, right? Like I did this training. You might need to decide what's next for you. So always weaving in like what you're doing and your expertise with what they're struggling with, because when we speak to people's struggles, we really are mirroring for them that we see them and we hear them. Mm, I love that because that's what I feel like I do in my coaching. It's like, I'm just Mm -hmm. mirroring back to them and then they're able to see something new or more clearly and take an action. Yeah. Well, that awareness piece is so huge as a coach, right? Like we want our clients to be aware and we really have to just help them get there on their own because we can't shove it in their faces. 
Yes. So speaking of awareness, that could be one of your content pillars, right? Like awareness is a big content pillar, especially for coaches. And if you talk about your own awareness, like I became aware that this just wasn't enough for me anymore. And this, I was yearning for something a little bit more and I was craving more. And so I did this coach training because I think over the next few months, maybe the next four to six months, you're really going to have to be educating your audience that you're not just a yoga teacher anymore. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Okay. And the other thing is you still want to use yoga as a tool and mindfulness as a tool, but it's not the, um, it's not that like, oh, I want to be, I want to learn to be more mindful. So I'm going to come see Matilda. Uh-huh. There's a lot of other reasons I would come see Matilda. It's not just the mindfulness piece. Yeah. So it's almost like we're expanding to get a little bit wider of a lane. Does that feel right? Yes, definitely. Okay. So I guess at the bottom line, all that we're talking about today is your audience needs to be really aware that you've shifted and your audience needs to be the right audience for what you have to sell. So speaking to their problems is the number one priority. Yes. Does that feel right? It does. And so how does that, how do we bring it back to getting them onto my email list and then potentially converting? Yeah. So yes. So that's where we need to head next. Uh, But for everybody listening and benefiting from Matilda's coaching, before we do anything else, before we create a lead magnet or decide what that nurture sequence will look like, we have to make sure like, oh, the right people are getting on. So we see who the right people are now. So let's talk about how to convert them and calls to action. So tell me, given um, using Instagram and then using email, what are some calls to action that you want people to take? What could they do? So this would be like the freebie they would get. Well, it could be anything because a call to action is not just buying a thing from us or hiring us. A call to action could be follow me on Instagram. So you've, you're seeing this reel and this resonates with you follow for more, right? Okay. Yeah. So getting more actual followers is a call to action right. and it's a conversion of sorts. It gets them on the road to potentially buying from you later on. So that's one, um, share people in their twenties have lots of friends usually, right? Like that's a very social time in our life. Yeah. And so do you know another friend who is struggling with the same stuff? Please share this with them. Yeah. I really like that one. Well, I mean, I like both, but yeah, if I could come up with something that's just really relatable, um, that kind of gets into their pain point. And then at the end, like, you know, uh, you're actually doing really great that you're exactly where you're supposed to be, or here's something you could try like a breathing technique, right? Mm -hmm. Try it, share it with a friend. Yes. You could also do a series. Um, you know, so it, you, if, especially if you're doing reels, they're so short, you could yeah. say like, you know, here's the problem. Here's a potential, like here are three potential uh, little tricks that you can try. And that could be a series of things mm. that would, you know, fo- uh, you know, follow for the next one. And the next one, I'm going to teach you this. And in the next one, I'm going to teach you that. So that could be a way to get people engaged. The other thing is um, when you're in your twenties, you might not think that you need help. So people might be really slow to convert, but if you can get them saving your stuff and looking at it over and over again, like really speaking their language. So especially on Instagram, on reels, having them um, not only share, but save something to look. So when you're feeling really anxious because you're about to go into a big meeting, save this breathing exercise and do it right before you go in, right? Like, so then they will be connecting with you repeatedly. Yeah. Okay. I, so those are three calls to action. Training. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what those, these calls are for. So that's how we get people starting to take action in a really safe way. So eventually taking an action like book a call with me or hire me, it, they've already been taking action with you. So I guess I want you to start thinking about your audience, first of all, is really getting clear on who they are and then getting them to take the baby steps needed to trust you. Okay. Right. To take yeah. action and then also trust themselves. Yes. That's a big one. And I love, see, I think about baby steps for myself, but like, I'm in, I need to invite them to take baby steps. Yes. Like, it would be weird if they were just like, okay, jump over. And <laughs> not that that can't happen. Right. But like, 
realistically. Let's get some baby steps in there. <laughs> yeah. And that's how people learn to, um, it, it really is about trusting us, but it's more about trusting themselves. Like, okay, Matilda said, I'm supposed to trust myself right where I am and I'm fine right where I am, but that's kind of bullshit. Cause I don't feel that way. Yeah. Oh, but now I'm using her breathing technique and I was able to get through that scary meeting with my boss and, oh, oh, I did that thing. And so it's not only gaining trust in you, it's also they can actually take action themselves. Yeah. If she helped me with that free thing, shit, imagine what she could do. Imagine what we could do together if I actually worked with her. So those that's the very first thing I want you to think about, a calls to action that are simple baby steps for your audience. Perfect. Okay. Yes. Then we have to talk about, you know, eventually how do you move people onto your email list? What what's in it for them? Cause that's all people care about what's in it for them. So if you're going to move your real viewers to an, uh, an email list, why should they join? Well, that, this is where that freebie comes in or that lead magnet, whatever you want to call it, or that ethical bribe, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> uh, trading this thing that I have for your email address. So I can become, I can get into relationship with you. Um, so the next step for you is once you do your interviews, your ideal client interviews, you're going to learn like what solutions are they looking for? Where are they really stuck? Only then can you start to think about um, a freebie that they will really want. And I, I kind of have some bad news about freebies. They're not that easy to create. Everybody will like tell you, oh, just make a lead magnet. It took me five years to create the lead magnet that actually started working for me. Oh it doesn't God. mean you, sh oh yeah. I mean, it doesn't mean you shouldn't be putting them out there and trying them, but like you already said, you tried your meditation one and it didn't kind of go anywhere. Yeah. And especially if you don't want to be known at just for yoga and meditation, we've got to find the freebie that works for you. And that yeah. will be, that will come to you. It doesn't mean like, so invite people to your email list. Hey, I show up there once a week and I share things there that I don't get to share on, um, on Instagram or, or if you get onto my email list, you're going to be sure to get everything versus Instagram deciding which one thing out of every 10 you see. or hundred that you get to see. <laughs> so those are compelling ways at the very beginning to get people onto your list before you, um, get your freebie out there. How does okay. that feel? Yeah, that feels good. And yeah, I was like, is she going to ask me to say what the freebie should be? Because like, it I don't know, be. but you're right. I won't know until I really get into the minds and the language of my, my ideal client. Yeah. And you might not even get your freebie known until you start doing your first five, 10, 20 private clients. Okay. Because yeah. that's how you learn so much about what people need is really by working with them. Mm -hmm. listening to them and working with them. Um, so, okay. We talked about getting, nailing down the right audience. We've talked about using calls to action that feel safe for your audience. And I think that's a mistake that a lot of people make, especially coaches. Their first call to action is get on a free call with me. <laughs> and it's like, this isn't 2014. I know that this free call is really a sales call. Like that's what people are thinking, whether it is or not. Right. right. So we've got to have calls to action that feels safe for our clients or potential clients. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then we talked about using email as a place to connect with them on a more regular basis. Um, so now we have to talk about what does that really look like for you since it's been sporadic? So tell me a little bit about what that challenge would be. I'm just giving like all of my time and energy towards social media. So by the time I get to the email list, the email I would like to make, it just feels like putty in my brain. So a couple of things, we make email harder than it has to be. We make it longer than it has to be. And we aren't repurposing what we're already doing. So my guess is, I mean, I know you've been doing this in different ways for over a year, right? Mm -hmm. You've got a lot of content. Mm, do you have anything on YouTube? Do you have any videos that you've ever put up on YouTube or anything like that? No. Okay. Do you have any videos that live anywhere? Like any, yes. any, okay. Yes. <laughs> so uh, an email could be a picture of a video that you've made and the link to that video for people to watch, to benefit from whatever was in that video, maybe a little overview of what was in that video. And then, Hey, here are the benefits. Here's three reasons why you should go watch this video. This is what you're going to get out of it. 
pictures in there, a picture of you, link to your Instagram, and that's your email. It doesn't, when you're, especially when you're getting started, it doesn't have to be epic. Okay. It could also be, hey, here's a little story from this week of something that I realized and I thought it might help you. Boom. Again, okay. little bite-sized thing. Um, hey, I'm really looking to talk to women because I want to figure out what they need. Do you know any women in their 20s who might be willing to do an interview with me? Yeah. Here's the link to set up my calendar, right? I'm really getting that sense of like the coffee date. Like this is just a little bit of a conversation I'm starting with them. Yeah. Yeah. And so don't make the email epic. They're going to appreciate it too. Like nobody wants to read a thousand word email. In fact, I always really strive to make my, fi my emails 500 words or less, which is, which is hard. Um, cause I'm chatty, but uh, until you really get the, the sense of it. And also how can you repurpose what you've already put out on Instagram? Yeah. I and how can back. you, yeah. And think about when you go look, looking back, put on your, like the lens or in the glasses that you're like, how can I take this old Instagram post and repurpose it using what I am now talking about as a life coach, because I guarantee you what you talk about in yoga is the same thing you're going to talk about as a life coach for a lot of it. Right. Yes. So it doesn't have to be hard. Okay. Does, yeah. Do those help for ideas to nurture? So, so helpful. So many okay. ideas. Um, I, so when we're talking about the coffee date, then when I was like thinking about when we over talk in the email, it's like, when it should be a coffee date, but you take them to dinner and it's like way too long. <laughs> right. Or you ask them to marry you with a call to action. That's like, no, buy my program. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I love, if that resonates with you, then just think about your dating, your people, you're dating your, your audience. Okay. I like okay. that. Yeah. So tell me what is most resonant for you out of this conversation and what you think you need to do next. Hmm. Well, I definitely see that the very first thing is to get all these um, ideal client interviews set up. Mm -hmm. That's number one. And then number two is continuing to create that I'm a coach first. And then mindfulness and yoga is are the tools. So get my audience to see me as that. And what's resonating for me is just like so much clarity on my like the expectations to have for myself and my audience. So now I don't feel like I'm doing something wrong or not getting it. It's just like, okay, baby steps, we're dating, you know, let's create a safe environment for them to take action. It just feels very clear and good. Yay, that's great. Um, so tell, can you talk a little bit about how your experience in the studio has, because up until now you've been really doing a great job with <laughs> you know, learning about yourself as an entrepreneur and learning about your content creation and your marketing. How has the studio been helpful in that way to keep you going? Yeah, the studio has been very helpful. I think if I had not joined it, because I just started my business a little over a year ago, and then I joined the studio, I think shortly after, and I do not think I would have kept posting. I would have gotten really overwhelmed and bogged down, but having the consistent um calls where i'm learning new techniques ideas you know really getting to know my clients and how to speak to them also the co-working hours so that i don't feel alone <laughs> it's just kept me going um and then factually like i got stuck in about 850 followers for like two years mm. and i now have a thousand and fifty five nice yeah so it's, it's working, you know, it's slow, but I see it and I'm, I am getting feedback even from my friends. Like they might not like my post, but, uh, you know, I'll see them and they're like, wow, you've been posting a lot and it looks really good and like so proud of you. So yeah, the, the membership has definitely kept me on track and I'm getting a lot of good feedback. And results. yeah, you've made it really, you've, you've done what I ask people to do, which is create a sustainable plan for themselves and work the plan. And you do a great job working the plan. Thank you. Yeah. So if you were going to tell somebody the studio is for you, who, who does the studio work for? Like what kind of person should join? Mm -hmm. um, I would say 
anyone that's like starting their business, mm -hmm. um, you know, they're taking that leap into trusting themselves and going for it. Having the content creation studio mm -hmm. would be a great uh, support for you. And I mean, because I'm working with women in their 20s or like early 30s, I I think that it's a good fit for them. And Thanks. That's, that's so good to hear because I'm such an old lady. So I love hearing that. I'm not old. <laughs> Your energy well, I'm not in my well. 20s, that's for sure. <laughs> well, I'm so glad that you're in there and you always add so much to the calls and the conversation and the energy. So I'm grateful that you show up every week, Matilda. Um, yeah. So how can people find you and follow you on Instagram to learn more about all of the wonderful things you teach with the tools of yoga, yoga and mindfulness? Yeah. So my Instagram handle is at mindful.matilda. Okay. And is that a new handle for you? Are you growing that or did you change it? Or was it always mindful like Matilda? For a while. Okay. Okay. So mindful dot Matilda. Um, one of the, I'm going to leave you with one thing. Cause I'm really curious to know. So you're going to have to let me know after you do your interviews. Yes. Are your people, do they resonate with the word mindfulness? Like, is that something <laughs> that, that hooks them or does that make them go, uh, I have to do this mindfulness thing and I don't really want to. Like, I'm really curious. So that's a question I want you to ask them. When I say the word mindfulness, what comes up for you? So that I think for you will be a super important question. Okay. Thank you for saying that. So I can yeah. create or add it to- Add that in. Interviews. Yeah, add that in. Yeah. Um, yeah, and also you could do an Instagram story on that, like getting a poll or getting feedback. Oh. Yeah. You know, like what is my, when I say mindfulness, what does it make you think of? Like just like you could just do research that way. Yeah. I like that. Okay. Yeah, I already get people. the sense that that might not be the word that's drawing them in. So, so we'll yeah, have to then ask. keep our eye on that. Okay. Yeah. Well, you did a great job today, Matilda. You were so coachable and awesome. And let me keep me updated on how this goes. I will. Thank thanks you. for being, thanks for playing today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bye everyone.